right, guys. Uh, thanks for coming tonight. Uh, we have a very special guest. I'm Jeff Gibby. Uh, I'm not the special guest, by the way, but uh, it's good to have you. Thanks for coming tonight. We had a lot of people sign up, and Rahul is one of a great technician. We always love to have him in the room. It's been a while, and uh, it's overdue. So let's go ahead and get to the uh, the funnest part of the evening, I guess. Today's demonstration is designed to instruct you on using Metastock and the accompanying software plugins. It's not a recommendation to buy or sell, but rather guidelines to interpreting and using specific features uh, and indicators within the software. The information software and techniques presented today should only be used by investors who are aware of the risk inherent in trading. Metastock shall have no liability for any investment uh, decisions based on the use of the software, any trading strategies, or any information provided in connection with the company. So, welcome. We got that out of the way. Appreciate you coming in tonight. Um, I do want to mention that this is a, 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 a three-part webinar series, and the way that GoToWebinar is set up, we need to have you sign up for part two if you want to get an invitation to part two. I made a little bit of a shorter link right here. And I'm going to just push that into the chat window so you can go up to there. But make sure you sign up for set part two, which is Saturday morning, um, and I'll I'll see you there then. So let's go. Uh, that gets that part of it out of the way. Uh, let's talk a little bit about Rahul Mohinder. You guys know that RMO is one of the systems I first invested real money with. It's a great methodology. He's going to talk. Rahul is going to talk about it and share it with us today. And uh, I'm actually pretty excited about that so I want uh, to uh, I want you guys to all give a warm welcome to Rahul. Uh, Rahul you, if you don't know the backstory of Rahul, Rahul is well I consider Rahul a close friend of mine he's been a, a partner with the business for longer than I've been employed at the business and since I just tagged in 20 years that's a pretty long time so let's go ahead and bring him in here uh, and uh, how you doing Rahul? Hey, thank you, Jeff. That's kind of you. What do you think? Um, if you if you wanted to tell us just one thing about you, what would it be? Well, I think the simplest thing about me is the fact that uh, you know I enjoy technical analysis. I'm really a diehard trader. I'm not a broker, not an advisor. I believe uh, you know financial independence is key, and uh, you know to to go with that belief, I I think. Uh, it's very important that we all learn more about trading, technical analysis, so uh, that's a bit of my theme and uh, I enjoy what I do, so I particularly uh, am very excited about uh, educating folks and you know, I, I think the fact that people want to learn is, is a great thing on its own, it's the first step to trading success, so uh, welcome everybody on that note. Okay, and I see your screen, it's coming through perfectly. And um, so, with that being said, it is in the um, uh, let's say the or the setup mode, but not the presenter mode just yet. But I can see your screen, and I can see your disclaimer. I hope you read this for us. No, I'm just kidding. I'm gonna oh. turn the <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna turn the time over to you, Rahul. Okay, fantastic. All right. Well, thanks for that, Jeff. Um, well, welcome everyone, and I appreciate your coming out and uh, taking the time out to be here in this room. Uh, I always believe that, uh, you know, the very fact that you come forward and want to learn, to take out the time to educate yourself, that is a wonderful initiative. Uh, I give full cognizance to the fact that you are making that effort, and I would try and put in every little uh, bit to try and ensure that what we do today is meaningful to those of you who are trading. Now whether you use the RMO or whether you are very new to it or are considering using it, I think today is a great class because what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to talk about what the RMO does as in a basic overview of all the different elements of the RMO template and uh, before we dive in just so that you all know the RMO is included uh, in Metastock uh, 10 and higher and the idea of using a system like the RMO is to be aligned to the primary trend and when I say primary trend you may like to call it the long-term trend or the major trend 
and uh, really it, it takes me to the fact that if we trade in the direction of our long-term trend, the odds of us making money are much more. Uh, the odds of us winning and putting on more winning trades is much more. And uh, you know, the success of the RMO has been, has been quite fantastic. Uh, we, we've got some great feedback from uh, users like yourself all over the world. Uh, I think we, we, we really enjoy hearing from you. And you know, this week, uh, rather last week, I was all over Asia, a couple of different destinations, and it's amazing how, how people use the system so well and, and appreciate the way it's working. So I can tell you it's, it's definitely uh, not just the most popular system inside of Metastock uh, for nothing. It's got, it's got a lot of legs and I personally put a lot of money uh, using my own indicators. I'm primarily a trader as I said. I'm not someone who's, who's into the broking business, advisory business, newsletter business. I really believe that all of you folks uh, need to be more and more independent. Uh, and when I say independent, I mean do your own analysis, depend on yourself, as finally we are answerable and responsible for our trading decisions. So the RMO can definitely help us in a big way by helping us trade in the direction of the long-term trend. And it allows us to detect this long-term trend with absolute ease. So just to get out uh, of the way the uh, method to apply the RMO template, just right-click on any chart of Metastock, hit the Apply Template button, and you would find a title RMO Trade Model. That's the one that you are going to be applying on a chart. And automatically what it does for you is brings up this template where you would see a chart right at the bottom. The RMO is right on top, the green histogram, that's the RMO. And then we have the Swing Trade 2 and the Swing Trade 3 indicators below it, which is in a pink and blue color and an indicator called the exit swing signal. So all of them uh, get uh, you going the minute you apply the template. So they would all display together. And right at the base, you would even find a volume uh, uh, indi indicator. And on the volume, I've even plotted a 50 period moving average off the volume. So all of that comes up automatically. So on the screen, you probably I've minimized the volume simply because it's a chart of the index, but uh, but basically if you apply the template, you will get uh, the volume data with the moving average. You would get a ribbon at the bottom. So everything comes up automatically the minute you apply the template. So in case you're new to things and you're wondering how to apply it, very simple, open a chart, right click, apply template, and select RMO trade model. And this is exactly what you would get, this chart. All right, let's start with some basics first. Now, when you look at the RMO system, what's very important is the fact that is the histogram above zero or below zero? If the histogram is above zero, we should understand that the existing longer term trend or primary trend is positive. Likewise, if the RMO goes below zero or is of a negative value, we should understand that the outlook is bearish. So it's actually very simple to conclude if the current prevailing primary trend is positive or negative. Simply look at the RMO being above zero or below zero. Do not worry about the size of that histogram, the shape of that histogram. It keeps curling up and down depending on the various market swings that occur, which are more internals than anything else. But above all, what counts is is the primary trend up or down, and that's very simple when you look at the RMO oscillator right on top. Now let's look at the next bit. I mentioned to you that the RMO helps us establish the primary trend, and the reason why we're trying to trade in the direction of the primary trend is simply because it gives us three very strong advantages. The first being it increases our odds of winning. Think of it, if you've got a market that's been going up for let's say one year, and if you are busy selling that market, you're not gonna be making a lot of money. You probably have more losing trades than winning trades. However, if I tried to use every little pullback as a buy opportunity or tried to trade in the buy direction, we should be making a lot more money then. 
So we're really trading in the direction of the stronger force, in the direction of that long-term trend. And above all, you're keeping in mind the big picture. So whether you are a trader, whether you're an investor, whether you want to hold the stock through, the big picture element is very important. You know, you should know where you are on that map. And I think that, you know, for example, I'll talk to you in a bit about how to identify or distinguish between a first breakout of the RMO or a continuation kind of breakout or an add-on kind of breakout on the RMO. And uh, by knowing that you're in a first breakout, you understand that in that big picture where you are in your journey or in your map. So uh, it's a very important uh, uh, tool in my opinion which blends in three different momentum measures the longer term short term and medium term we all talk about three different kinds of trends and uh, let's try and tell you how the RMO tries to work things out so right on top the green histogram which is the RMO oscillator is my long term and uh, as you look at the lower window which is a swing trade two and three indicators they represent the short term and medium term so the pink portion represents the short term trend and the blue uh, histogram represents the medium term trend so pretty much like saying if the blue was above zero the medium trend medium term trend is positive if the pink was above zero the short term trend is positive so like you can see on this chart from January the blue went above zero and that's when the medium term uh, trend of the market changed to a bullish mode so uh, if we get very granular into the system you can understand that the short term which is the pink uh, is going to obviously signal first and then followed up by the medium term and the long term trend and what I finally want you to do is take a buy trade when all the three trends are in agreement when all the three trends are positive as in the short term medium term and long term have aligned up to signal that we have a breakout now just so that you understand now on the price chart you see two or three uh, elements the easiest one is right on the x-axis which is where you see the months written and the dates written uh, you find a little ribbon with the RMO bullish and RMO bearish so that ribbon helps me understand if the RMO is above zero or below zero so it becomes very easy to read particularly let's say you want to keep the oscillator minimized or an indicator minimized you know you can look at that x-axis ribbon and understand that the RMO is bullish or bearish right so that's replicating what the green histogram on top of the long-term trend is now next is the element of the arrows that you see so the arrows represent the short term or the pink histogram whereas the blue and red colors on the bars are painted based on the medium term trend which is that blue histogram now just so that you understand when do we get a buy arrow let's take one quick example here so look at where I have my mouse pointer or for that matter uh, there's a little uh, yellowish kind of cursor point right in the middle of February on this chart you will notice that that's a point where the pink overtook the blue now I've just made the blue a, a, a line instead of a histogram so that you can all visually understand this so when the pink gets above the blue it breaks out so every time that pink gets above the blue it the short term is crossing over the medium term and when that happens it stems an arrow the next element you want to check is when that happens you look up and you see okay the long term is positive as in the RMO is above zero and we want to go ahead and continue taking that buy trade so you can see I have a lot of arrows so let's take the first one what's going to be the first signal so the short term was negative in this case and I'm looking early January look at the first 10 bars on this price chart the first arrow that I have stamped for you uh, right there you have a situation where the uh, pink was below zero but that's the first time when the pink crossed over the blue or the short term crossed over the medium term so that's the first indication of uh, the short term trend so the short term trend is, hap is, is stamping automatically for you 
all of these arrows. The reason I'm just explaining it to you so that you understand what's under the hood in terms of how it's signaling those arrows, how those colors are coming. So the bar colors are coming blue when the histogram or rather when the blue gets above the zero. Right, so the, the medium term trend is painted in those bar colors, the short term trend is painted with arrows. Now folks, you would notice you have a couple of red arrows on this chart. So let's look at say the, the red arrow, the last red, red arrow uh, on your right hand side which is probably in the month of mid-April or around mid-April. You have a red arrow which indicates that the short term turned negative, however it's a very unconfirmed signal simply because the bars are blue in color. If the bars are blue in color, it tells you the medium term trend is up. And also if you look up at the RMO, you find that the RMO is bullish. So we don't want to be going short or selling when you have, uh, you know, just a short term turn. So it's very important we understand this, that we're not using all the red arrows here simply because the RMO is bullish. We want to trade in the direction of the trend. However, we would be attracted to use the buy arrows or the blue buy arrows that you see because that's where you can see the short term trend has broken out, the medium trend is still bullish and the long term which is the most important, the RMO is above zero and strong. So our focus needs to be towards buying and not towards selling. The next element which is very important is for us to focus on our first breakout. This for example is an updated chart of the S&P 500. Let's look at mid-November when the S&P broke out based on the RMO system. Towards the first half of November you can see you get the first buy arrow on the system which is really when the pink crosses over the blue. It's followed up by the fact that you have blue colored bars, so it doesn't happen all together. It first starts with an arrow, moves on to the medium term by painting it a blue colored bar, and then finally the RMO goes above zero. So it could happen in three separate st stages, it could happen all together at times, it could happen maybe across two or three bars at times. So uh, be patient till all the three are in a direction of positive before you jump out and take a buy trade. So right when you see that around mid-November you got blue bars, you got the buy arrow and that's going to be what I call the first breakout. That's the first point you want to be taking a trade. That's the point where you identify that the market's uh, going to be moving. Let's follow up by looking at the second, third and fourth arrows. So when you look at uh, you know the the next buy arrow, that's what we call an add-on. So towards January, February, March you have a couple of your three uh, blue colored arrows. Now that's what I call an add-on signal. An add-on signal is basically a second signal or a third signal or a fourth signal. It doesn't mark the beginning of the trend, it marks the fact that probably the market retraced a bit and is once again trying to break back out into the same long-term trend direction. So keep that in mind. The second, third and fourth signal in terms of signal quality or, or temperature of the trend uh, is much lower than the first breakout. So as, as progressive traders what we need to do is try and work with signals that are the first breakout and not pay a lot of attention to a second, third or fourth or fifth breakout. Now I always get this question, well since you focus a lot on the first breakout and that's what you recommend doing, why do you mark the second, third, fourth and fifth breakouts? As in why do I mark all these continuation breakouts? Now the reasons are twofold. One is there could be a situation where you genuinely miss that first breakout, as in you were not looking at that stock or maybe you were, uh, you know, you missed a signal and you want to try and come back in. So that's one genuine way that you can use the add-on breakout. Maybe you put on a trade but maybe with a smaller quantity uh, in comparison to a first breakout. The second reason and actually the primary reason why I, I marked those add-on signals was it allowed me to reconfirm that the trend is once again resuming and it also allows me that way to lift my stops. 
So I'll talk about that in a bit, but basically it allows me to trail the stops. So the way the add-on helps is twofold. Number one, if you miss the first breakout, maybe you can take the second one or the add-on signal, uh, but I recommend trading the add-on signal with a smaller quantity, but focusing on that first breakout because that's the point the big trend steps in and that's the point we want to get into the market and uh, therefore focus first breakout, use the add-ons more to trail stops, use the add-ons if you have missed the first entry. So that's the way we need to look at things. Now often users ask me what if I had red colored bars and uh, you know a, a red arrow, is that good enough for me to start selling or exiting? Well no, you need to be waiting for a change in trend. I need to have very specific rules and that's what I try and do with the armor to keep things effective. We've got to be rule based in our approach rather than being subjective in the approach. So uh, what I'm saying is no, if you have a red bar and a red arrow but the armor is positive, we are not selling. We would need to wait for the three to align. So I'm a little diligent and strict on those rules and I think that's where I am where I am and uh, that's why I enjoy trading. So let's recap those rules I just talked to you about. When you are going long or waiting for a buy arrow which signifies a short term trend uh, cross, the second thing we wait for is a medium term trend strength or a blue colored price bar and finally we are also going to be checking that the RMO or the green histogram is greater than zero. So if it's above zero the RMO is bullish and when these three align we want to use that as our point of going long on the trade and let's bear in mind that the first breakouts what's very relevant and not the add-on breakouts. So when you look at a price chart it becomes very easy for me to look at a price chart and uh, and suggest that is the long-term trend. So let's say we're on the right hand side so I particularly uh, chopped off the last 10 days of data on this price chart. You can see the last few bars on this chart are actually dropping. You would see the last five to ten bars are actually a, a sharp decline and this is where everyone thinks so oh, have things turned. Now when you look at the RMO still being above zero you say no I'm not going to be selling yet and thankfully we didn't sell because today when I look at it and this is uh, the nifty chart which is the Indian index, uh, we actually rolled back into that new high. So uh, it, it just goes to show that when a market drops we, we tend to get emotional at times and I don't want emotion to drive our decision making process. I want you to look at that RMO, look at the bar colors, we're still blue, the RMO is still above zero, we're not going to be selling short. So just opening the template tells you a lot, it speaks to you, it talks to you, it tells you long terms up or down and you know it's effective, it's easy, it forces you to be in discipline, forces you to be in that trend direction and I think that's the great part. Now just stepping in a little more on that three dimensional buy or the three rules for buy, the blue colored bars. Now you can notice on this chart I haven't even loaded the oscillator. The RMO oscillator and the swing trade indicators are not even there. Well I actually don't necessarily need it simply because the experts really do a good job in terms of marking the blue colored bars and the arrows. So when I look down I can see the RMO ribbon is bullish and that's the first bar where I can see a blue colored bar the armo bullish and of course the arrow came way ahead okay so the short term changed much earlier so that's that's a nice thing that if you are concerned about screen real estate uh, you could even keep your chart as easy as this where you just kind of minimize all the other indicators and keep it this way because sometimes there are a lot of folks who look at many different charts on one screen or you're short of uh, screen real estate so you could even get to this mode where you just have a plain chart and look at that RMO right on that ribbon at the bottom and you've got the bar colors and arrows to help you through it. Now friends the first line that I've plotted is actually the first breakout. The second one that has the arrow on it as well is an add-on breakout so I'm not very interested in in trading that add-on breakout as much as I should be on the first breakout. Now uh, 
I always, uh, you know, get questions is, would you really want to minimize the other indicators? Well, I could minimize the swing trade indicator and the exit indicator, but I definitely like to keep the armo up top. And the reason I like to keep that oscillator open up top is I come to know that how far are we from zero or close to zero, because when you get really close to zero, you kind of get alerted uh, if the trend could potentially change or not. So it's a good idea to keep that oscillator there, even though, uh, you know, it might take a little bit of your screen space, I think it's a positive step. Now, just so that we understand how we, how we uh, look at a sell signal, uh, pretty much the same rules and opposite. We're looking at the red colored bars this time. We're looking at red arrows, which tell us that the short term's down, and a negative RMO, or that is a RMO that's below zero. So identify the first breakout. Again, try and make sure that uh, we all uh, you know, work with that first breakout area. This, for example, is a second signal, a third signal, a fourth signal. I need you to be really working with the first one. And when I say first breakout, well, after a series of blue bars, after an uptrend, after an arm of bullish area, you get the first cell. That's what I need to be working with. So I can take the cells over here, here, and here, but obviously you want to you wanna be taking these cells in a smaller way. I'd rather use these add-on signals to upgrade my stops. So, you know, let's say if I started out by selling there and I use the swing high as my stop, I can bring down my stops to this and then later on to that. So it helps me move the stop, but, you know, I can't take away from the fact that what I want is uh, let's focus on that first breakout and try and get trades in that first breakout mode. Now, moving on uh, to the, oops, okay, now let me try and get rid of all those uh, drawing tools, okay, here we are. So here's a chart of IBM, and the reason I brought this up is uh, over the last six months or so, you would probably see a nice bullish phase as well as a bearish phase, and uh, what you would understand is there are a number of places where you can identify. So that's the first breakout, which is the first time when the red trend turns to blue bars. You have the buy arrow that comes in much before. And then when you look down at the RMO, you can see that uh, the RMO has turned from a bearish to a bullish. Or if you look up at that RMO, you can see that uh, things have changed. So I want to I want to focus on buying on that first breakout. So what do I do every time I get the add-on? So let's say you know I I look at IBM when I'm right here, let's say towards February. And uh, you know, that's a phase where a lot of people get excited when we're we're virtually at a new high and the market's pulled back a little. So when you get that add-on, instead of really going all out and buying it, if you really want to buy it there, you want to get in with a very small quantity because you're in a very progressed trend. And you know that, okay, I can at least lift my stops to that low. So you can you can keep moving your stops up uh, more than anything else. And that, for example, is the first breakout on the sell side. So very recently in March, when IBM was at that $175 area, you can see that uh, how you've got the red bars and the RMO turned down. So all of that's happened, the three rules. You've got bar color the arrow and the armo down and when all three sink in the first point it sinks in that's the signal bar now i always recommend that you buy above the high of the breakout bar or sell below the low so let's say if you identify that that is the first bar where i have everything in sync i want you to sell below that low i don't want you to be randomly selling at a market price i want you to be testing for weakness uh, and making sure that we use a trigger point. Likewise, when you buy, you want to buy strength. You want to buy above the high of a signal bar. And when you go short, you want to sell below the low of a signal bar. In fact, in one of the recent conferences, I brought this up where, uh, you know, a lot of folks are more focused towards the buy side. And, uh, you know, we're, we're born optimists, as I put it. And, uh, 
you know, we're not that focused on the sell side sometimes. And, you know, just for those of you folks who are very used to only investing in the markets or taking long positions, there's an equally good opportunity uh, on the sell side, friends, because, you know, as they say, fear sets in faster. In fact, the falls sometimes trigger much faster than the uh, upward rallies. So like you can see in IBM, it erased probably four months of gain in, uh, you know, two or three months. So it's it's sometimes a more accelerated pace, in fact, more often a more accelerated pace when the market drops. So there's an equally good opportunity on the sell side. And if you really don't want to go uh, naked short, you can uh, use derivatives uh, like, you know, buying put options, you know, or putting on other kinds of strategies. But I want to, to uh, highlight to you that it's important that we trade both directions of the market. So that's when we're doing an honest job as a technician, when you participate in both the buy side and the sell side. If you're only going to come in and say, look, I'm only looking at buy signals, you're missing out and you probably would not make the fullest of the system either. Now, with that said, let's talk about how we can improve our performance a little more with the RMO system. So one very important thing that we learned is the fact that uh, we have uh, the first breakouts that we're going to focus on. Now let's look at, uh, you know, the next bit, which is, okay, which is focusing on the volume. So let's look at this chart. Oops, I need to get rid of that. Okay. So let's look at this chart right here and uh, look at the point where we get the first breakout. So you've got the blue colored bar and I'm talking somewhere in June and uh, we've marked a little dotted uh, yellow colored line or olive colored line. We can see the blue colored bars, the buy arrow obviously stepped in before it and then when you look up at the RMO oscillator you can see it positive. Now I always say when you're looking at an RMO breakout, you're looking at a, a, a breakout in the long-term trend and how can something go up if it doesn't have volume? Which is why I plot the moving average of volume. So look down at the volume the red dotted line is the moving average of volume and what you see is that there is under average volume at the time of your signal or even if you look at the foundation, look at two or three bars behind it or one or two bars in front of it, in and around that area, all those bars have under average volume and volume expresses the amount of interest, the amount of money that's rotating in the stock. So if volumes are very low and under average when you get a signal, whether it's a first breakout or an add-on, uh, I'm not that excited about it. And, I, you know, I'm willing to look back two or three bars off that as well. So you can see in this case, even if I went back two or three bars, the volume's missing. So when you get a breakout, if you see it uh, with, you know, low volumes or under average volumes to be more specific, we're not going to get a big breakout because how can something go up without the money push? Whereas if you look at mid-August when we had the, the blue colored bar and you say buy above that high, you see that the RMO is bullish and that's when you want to go long. Uh, we understand that, uh, great, that's a first breakout. And I can also see, can you look at the volume behind it? All above average volume. So I'm willing to even look not just at the signal bar, go back one or two bars, see the foundation to that breakout. So if that's there, uh, that helps you. So if you can focus on first breakout, if you can focus on the fact that you have above average volume on that breakout, you're definitely going to be taking a lot better trades, uh, you know, than uh, than before. So let's look at the next one, which is uh, this example, where you can see again you have a sell breakout, and this time you have a red colored bar. So exactly where we have that dotted line, just look down at the volume, plus minus two bars of that signal bar. We don't have any volume. So, you know, I'm not excited uh, trading in a market that doesn't have the volume. So, so try and stay away from a sell signal if the volume is missing. So it's about being more, <clears throat> sorry, it's about being more, uh, you know, progressive in terms of selecting better trades. So let's look at, you know, you've got a blue bar. You want to buy above that high. You've got the arrow with you. You look at the RMO that's there and you can see that nice little burst in volume. So that area has above average volume. That area does 
push out on volume as well. So even if it's just a little bit above average, maybe even just 10% above average, well at least it's a signal worth considering. But if you have, you know, stuff like that, which doesn't even have a single bar plus minus one or two bars of the signal bar uh, with uh, even average volume, there's no point even uh, wasting time on it. You probably are just a sideways market there. So it's a great way to, to kind of up your uh, strike rate and performance with the system. So I'd urge you to look at first breakout. I'd urge you to reconfirm that with the volume. Uh, you know, that, that's a, a positive step to be taking. Okay, let's move on. Now the next thing I like to do is to use a trigger to enter. And as I mentioned earlier, whenever you get a buy signal, as in you get blue colored bars, you have the arrows, don't just go buy market. So like you can see on this price chart, uh, if I use my rule of trigger where I buy above the high, so that small little bar that I see there, that's the bar which has all the three rules aligned, the bar where I've marked the dotted vertical line. I want to buy above the high and notice the price does not go above that high and therefore we would not have bought. But if you were someone who just randomly traded and said, hey, I've got the three rules, let's just buy. Why do I need to wait for the high to get broken out? You do need to wait for the high to get broken out because that's our smallest confirmation. If you go back into the core principles of the Dow theory, we like to buy strength. We like to sell weakness. So when you are buying, what's the simplest test of strength? Well, if you're really bullish, just go above the high. So keep a trigger, qualify your entries, buy above the high of the breakout bar, you won't be getting into a lot of bad trade that way. Focus on the first breakout, focus on the volume. You know, when you look at these things, you know, it's these little things which count. It's the little things which will take you so much more ahead uh, with trading. Now another great thing that I enjoy using is Fibonacci and again this is not mandatory that you have to use it with the Armo system. It's just more about giving you a feel because you know I know all of us here are here to up our performance with the system. You might be probably getting you know say six and a half or seven out of ten correct trades and you want to try and see that okay how do I take trades which are more meaningful? How do I take trades which have a bigger breakout? So uh, the Fibonacci retracement is a great tool inside of Metastock and all I do is every time I get a buy breakout and you know that's the point where I would have got a buy breakout, I would have seen blue colored bars and you look down at the RMO, that's the point where the RMO kicks in, uh, goes above zero and uh, the nice thing that you also see in this is can you see the surge up in volume? So it's beautiful, you, you pretty much have a nice uh, breakout lining up, there's a lot of money which is rotating in at that point. And one of the things I like seeing is when we break out, you know, do we cross the 61.8% retracement? So uh, if that's also happening, it's a signal that you can move all the way up to that 100% uh, mark and then rotate a little bit in terms of previous resistance and then finally move forward to the 1.6 or the 161.8%. So that's that's all automatic. I'm using the default values of Fibonacci retracement. I like plotting it personally because it gives me some sense of price target as well and also allows me to, to plan my money management a bit and get a, a deeper understanding in terms of uh, how strong that breakout is. So if I break out the 61.8%, I read that as a strong confirmation. So just to, to recap for everyone over here is what we're doing is we're trying to make sure that uh, we are, are trading the first breakout, we are making sure we have volume on it, uh, and if you have Fibonacci support as well, that's a third way that you can uh, up your performance with the Armo system. Now let's talk about stops. So where you can see the first breakout sell in this case or rather the signal where I've just marked uh, the markets uh, breaking down, you know, that's the point you're going short. So people ask what's the stop? A lot of times you get tempted should I just use the current bar or the previous bar as high as a stop when I'm going short. Now if you use what, what I call the two bar high or low stop, that's a very, very tight stop and tight stops are not always good because you can always get into that situation where you get chopped out and then later on you find that the trade works. So I like to use more of the swing high, so I know at times it means that the swing high is, is a little further out, so if I'm going short right there, I want to use the swing high as my stop and if you want to be more 
uh, mechanical, you can count back one, two, three, four, five, and use the highest bar as your stop. So to start with at times your stop is big, and uh, but you know remember with every add-on, so you see every little arrow you can see how that stop has traveled down. Okay, that's a trailing stop. So every time you get a arrow, you're able to you know you get a sell arrow and add-on signal. You're able to use the previous five bar high as a stop. So or the previous swing high as a stop. So that's the way I like to go about it. I don't want to. Uh, use uh, you know a very tight stop. I like the five bar high low. That's how we tested and built the system as well. Use the swing high, swing low. Uh, very important because uh, you know that way you're not putting in stops that unnecessarily get triggered. So keep that in mind. Stops is is very important when we trade. I do not recommend you're taking any trade without a stop. So. Uh, stops. Now let's talk about the next element which is exiting. So one great way to exit is obviously to use the trailing stop model that I just spoke about where every add-on signal works like a trailing stop. So that's for someone who's very very longer term trend oriented. But sometimes we must admit we get into a very sharp up move, right? And and you know you get into a trade which just goes your way and uh, you know it's just going bar by bar up in one single slope. And if you're in one of those trades, you can use the indicator right on top, or uh, rather just below the armor called the exit swing signal. So the exit swing signal, if you see the histogram slipping below the red line, you can understand that the market's moving out from an overbought phase, or is probably a good time to exit long positions. Now, the reason I mention the single slope bit is it's very important we understand where to use the exit swing signal. I personally like using the trailing stop model because that allows me to roll through the trend a lot more. But who uses the exit swing signal and why did I build it? Because often I get into a trade which just goes boom boom in my favor. You have 10, 20 bars rolling out in your favor. That's when you want to use the exit swing signal. If you have a single slope trend going in your favor, and I pretty much uh, keep a simple rule that if I'm at a 15 or 20 bar high, right, I don't want to be at a 5 bar high and I start using I want to be in a 15 or 20 bar high point and I say, okay, and now I'm obviously uh, very thick into this trend, that's when I can use the exit swing indicator to understand that uh, if it slips below that red line or overbought regions, uh, I should use that bar's low as my point of exit okay so similarly if you are in a short trade if the exit swing signal gets above the blue portion uh, that's when you want to think of exiting a short position so try and uh, uh, keep that in mind exit swing signal to be used only when you're profitable only after you've seen 15 odd bars running in your favor you're in a single slope uptrend that's when you want to use the exit swing signal indicator to really help you take some profits or trail your stops. However, our focus would be more towards using the uh, trailing models, which I told you with every add-on, keep lifting that stop, and that's a great way to push through. So let's recap what I just mentioned on the exit. Use add-on or successive signals uh, as an opportunity to upgrade or trail your stops, which is more the trend following guy. Second is when in a profitable single slope trend, and I gave you one rule of thumb there, if you're at a 15 bar high, let's say, uh, use the exit swing signal if you're in that single slope uptrend. And finally, I cannot get away from the fact that we're all doing this business to make money, so our exiting needs to have both a financial as well as the technical perspective that I told you. So let's say if you have bought an equity or you bought an instrument where you say, okay, I'm making X amount of money, and I'm very happy with that X amount of money. You want to book some profits at where you think you have achieved some kind of a financial goal. So I personally set it as a percentage. So sometimes when I when I trade a daily chart and I'm say seven eight percent up on the market, I definitely want to take you know fifty or sixty percent off my my trade off the table and then just hold through the rest of it. It becomes easier for me simply because when I book that profit, I'm much more comfortable holding on to the rest of my trade. It kind of uh, locks it in for me. So divide your exits if you can into a financial uh, profit-taking methodology as well as 
keeping in mind the technical rules that I mentioned where you can trail the stops. So whether it's a situation where you're using the exit swing signal or you're trailing through. Now, just to recap on how do we trail with the add-ons. So you, let's say, get in, in the first breakout, and this is uh, the S&P 500 chart, which I showed you earlier on. So that's the first breakout mid-November, and every blue arrow that comes successively after that, look at the, the swing low just prior to that. So use those swing lows as your new stop. So every time, so you look at the recent blue arrow that came in towards end April, again, you could use a swing low. So I prefer the swing low rather than just mechanically counting five bars back. Uh, the swing low is, is a great place to keep it. You know, it's, it's always a good support point uh, to keep in mind. So uh, that's a nice way to trail through and hold through and, uh, and you know, and lock in. So just to recap uh, a lot of what we've discussed, we talked about how you can accelerate your performance on the first breakout trades. You can trade the add-on signals, but try and trade them in a smaller way. Use them more for trailing stops. Trigger with a filter. I just showed you how important it is that when you get the blue bar, the buy arrow, the RMO bullish, we need to buy above the high or sell below the low. So keep that little trigger point. Use a little filter. So let's say if uh, you know you're you're using a stock that's a hundred dollars. You want to make sure that it doesn't just go to a hundred point or one. You want to watch it staying above a hundred for a few ticks. See it comfortably goes through that and get in. Uh, you know everything cannot be mechanized. We need you to to look at the fact that we cross that high with a decent filter. Sometimes I even watch it stays above that price for a couple of minutes, and that's when I get in. So uh, use a price alert if if that helps you. Stay disciplined with the rules. I cannot stress this more because a lot of times when we trade, you know, you are, uh, you know, going to be getting a lot of pieces of information from all around, right? You've got a lot of disturbances, as I call them. You've got people trying to give you a lot of advice. You've got a lot of newsletters which probably come into your inbox, or you've got friends you talk to, television, uh, newspapers, journals that you read. All of that sometimes. Uh, you know, gets you thinking in, in all kinds of directions, you know, because not everybody thinks the same way. Not everybody is you uh, when it comes to your money. Not everybody is you in terms of your uh, time horizon and your methodology. So stay disciplined with the rules. And I have to say that if you're not disciplined with the rules, it's not going to work. You saw that chart on the S&P 500, which is indicative of the entire market, how solid it's been. Or for that matter, on most of the security that you see, I'm, I'm I'm very used to seeing that seven out of ten times we're always trading in the right direction. So why are we not making money with the system sometimes? It's only because we get indisciplined. We sway with the rules. We twist the rules a little bit. So if you can be diligent with the rules, and you know, I should probably add one more bit. If you don't stick to the same stock with the same rules, you know, ten times in a row, how do you even know that you're seven out of ten correct? The problem is if we lose money on IBM today, we switch it out. We say, forget IBM, it doesn't work for me, let's move to Apple. We either switch our stock, we switch our time frame, and you know that's where we blow things out of proportion. So friends, if we have to be successful in trading, we need to stay with the same rules, the same stock, the same amount of money continuously just to prove to ourselves that the system's working and I'm good with this. And once you know that, it becomes easier for you to progress and then get into things like stock selection and multi time frame analysis. But to start with, I need that discipline because without that discipline, uh, it's not going to work no matter how good a system you use. Okay, rotating back to the slide. The Fibonacci retracement is what I use as a big guide. In fact, I don't have time today for this, but Fibonacci projection, another great tool. Uh, which you can use if you're trying to look at some price targets. I use the retracement and the breakout of that 61.8% with the first breakout as a good confirmation. I definitely want to use volume. I like to see when I get that first breakout, at least at that signal bar or around that bar, uh, you want to look at the volume. Now, now if you trade an index, uh, when you look at, let's say, the spot chart of an index, the index actually doesn't trade. So that's the only place which is exception to it where uh, you don't have to use the volume. So keep in mind these rules. And friends, obviously everything that I just explained to you, uh, we have explorations for that. So if you are using uh, Metastock's inbuilt explorer, 
the scans are all there. So if you're looking for buy arrows, sell arrows, all of that's there. But for those of you on the uh, ATM, those of you who have my add-on called the Automated Trend Modules, which is really a progressive step into uh, the RMO, uh, which is more dynamic and adaptive as well. We'll talk about that in the second session and how you can even improve your uh, RMO trades because that's where I've built something called a super filter and uh, uh, that's what I'm going to talk about in our next session. Uh, so we have the integrated buy and sell scans which allow you to look for where you have all three conditions, the blue bar, the buy arrow, as well as the RMO bullish. So that makes it uh, really interesting and uh, the scans are, are, are very simple to use. So all that's inbuilt, you don't need to worry about okay will I get the scan, will I not get the scan and uh, uh, you know all of that's available to you. So to recap we've got to make this rule based and objective. The RMO is not a very subjective uh, indicator, well not subjective at all if I could put it that way. Uh, it works on all time frames and asset classes so whether you trade Forex, whether you trade equities, whether you trade options you can definitely use the RMO uh, template to your advantage. Uh, I personally do look at all kinds of time frames. I look at hourly charts a lot. I look at dailies, look at weeklies. So depending on whatever time frame you use, uh, uh, you can use the system. Uh, it focuses on the core long-term trend direction, which is great. It helps us stay with the big picture, with the long-term trend. And above all, it's you know it's backed by great scanning or explorations. You have all the scans to look for opportunities. So you're never going to be in a situation where uh, you say that, okay I've, I've run, you know I missed out on a signal. Well if you use your Explorer you wouldn't miss out on your signal. So make that a habit. The scans are, are built for you. Make, make use of that. And the money management is quite sensible because we know exactly where do we enter a trade, at what price do we trigger it, what's our stop and then we know how to even trail that stop and put some targets using things like Fibonacci. Uh, so money management is a nice blend in. Now just to kind of help you understand what's the super filter with the ATM, now this is not included in part of default Metastock but the new super filter model what it does for you really quickly is there are times when uh, the RMO goes into a bullish mode and you can see these new bar colors that I've got here, you can see the bars are orange and red so you have a light blue, a red, an orange so a light blue tells you the undertone of the trend is not all that bullish but a dark blue tells you that the undertone is, is nice and bullish, very strong. So uh, it's a new color coding model which gives you four different colors. It is a super filter because it even filters out the RMO signals. So somewhere, you know, areas like this where the RMO went up, uh, the super filter continued to stay red and orange, not allowing you to buy it. So it's a, it's a very strong acceleration on the existing system. It's, it's adaptive, in other words it adjusts to the stock that you're looking at automatically. So the super filter is definitely a step ahead and folks if you want to learn more about this I'm going to be uh, discussing this uh, over uh, the next session that we have. Well that's about all we have time for uh, right now. I'm going to open it up for questions and uh, uh, the little bits that I can answer and uh, Jeff will uh, will probably wrap things up. I've got it ready. Over I've here. got a few questions that are ready. Can you hear me okay Rahul? Absolutely. Okay good. <laughs> That's always something I ask because you don't know how many times I've been 15 minutes into something and found out my mic was muted. So in any case, Lewis had a couple of good questions. Um, the first one was about prof uh, partial profits. Uh, are you a fan of mm -hmm taking partial profits or do you usually get out of a position all at the same time? Oh, I never get out of my entire trade at one time unless, uh, you know, I've got a very, very strong reason to. Um, you know, nine out of ten trades that I take and, uh, you know, I also recommend to you, Luis, is that uh, it's always good to take partial profits because then you're leaving some part of your trade to run through the absolute high. So it's a good idea to split things up because, you know, somewhere you feel that, oh, I'm, I'm earning a lot of money and I want to take that off the table. So you kind of take care of the fact uh, of safety where you lock in some profit, but at the same time you don't miss out uh, the entire opportunity. So it's always a good idea to, to book partial profits and leave the rest to roll and trail that with a stop. Okay. 
here's another question I was kind of interested to hear your answer for. So it's also from Lewis. I promised to ask you. Say we're looking at a stock chart and you've got everything looks great. You've got a bullish ribbon. Your short-term mm -hmm. trend is blue. You have a buy signal, but you, th uh, you the overall market doesn't look good. Like, like, like let's say the Dow is coming down, but you have this beautiful buy signal. Would you take that mm -hmm. into account in your trade? Uh, so, Jeff, if your question is correct, is that the index looks negative, but the stock looks positive? Correct. Oh, absolutely. My rules are very structured to the fact that if I can work with the first breakout that does have, uh, uh, you know, the volume support and, you know, things which I looked at, if it's a first breakout, has everything that I'm looking at, I'm going to take that trade no matter what the index says. Because later on, Lewis, what happens is we call these outperformers and underperformers. It's very easy to give it that little tagline where you say, oh, you know, Apple's doing well, but sorry, IBM's not. And despite them kind of being from that same sector of information technology and computers. Okay. Timothy asks, actually asks a question I can answer. Can the Explorer scan for the RMO uh, be multiple times during the day if you're on Metastock Daily? Uh, you can, Timothy. Actually, um, as long as you've got, I believe we added that in, maybe it was 13 or 14, but n now the Explorer and the data that Reuters provides us, we update that hourly throughout the day. So if you want to run a scan on your daily charts, uh, but halfway through the market session, you're going to get it up to the, about the last hour. Uh, in the market day. So you can absolutely use uh, the RMO scanning during the day, even if you have Metastock daily. Okay. Uh, Khalid asks if uh, 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 RMO will work on a tick chart. No, it does need open, high, low, close data. It might display for you, but uh, a lot of the calculations that happen on the RMO system, it does need a minimum of 300 bars of historical data. It does need a uh, uh, you know open high low close chart, and obviously I recommend using technical analysis, not just the RMO on stocks that actually trade. You know there are uh, stocks where you you don't even have a single trade, let's say in one day, and it trades the next day. So I don't want you know stocks where there's a bar that's missing, or let's say you use even a five minute chart. You don't want to look at stocks which are very inactive, where you say you know there are times for five minutes there's no trade and therefore there's no bar. So I do want you to look at stocks that are a liquid, uh, and, and I'm not being very demanding in that. All I'm saying is, well, it should have a trade a day if you're looking at a daily chart, or, you know, a trade a bar if you're looking at a five-minute chart. So it should be a liquid stock. To add to that a little bit, Khalid, I, I, you just kind of gave me an idea. Uh, with Metastock, you can now actually do a multiple tick chart where you can say, well, every 300 ticks I want a bar. And... Um, I've never actually looked at RMO in that way, but it would technically work. <laughs> so you could actually pull open a multiple tick chart and take a look at RMO and see how well that performs in that type of an environment. It won't work on a, obviously on a single tick chart because your open, high, low, close are, are all the same. But I'm actually very, very interested to see. I think tomorrow I'm actually going to play with that a little bit to see what it looks like on a like a 480 tick chart or something along those lines. You've given me an idea. So thank you for that. Um, one more question, last question of the day um, for you, Rahul, is what is the number of periods you use for your m volume moving average? Okay, now that's default. So in case you're worried that how would you get it, when you apply the inbuilt RMO templates, that's defaulted in. But for your knowledge, it's a 50-period exponential average that we tested it with and we gave it to you with. So that's what I use, a 50-period exponential average of the volume. Okay, perfect. And that's the questions we have for you. I hope that's helpful for you. I know most of you said you're a Metastock user. Uh, in the polling this, that we did at the start of the session, about 80% of you use Metastock. So just to, to reiterate, if you want to apply this model, I'd recommend you play with it. I love to show this thing just because it's simple. It's totally objective. You're not trying to make a lot of guessing decisions. You know where your stop should be, all of that kind of stuff. And if you want to apply it to a chart, all you need to do is just either in the Power Console where it says Apply Template, apply the RMO Trade Model, or if you've got a, a, an open chart, you can right-click on the chart and go to RMO Trade Model. So that seems like the questions. What time is it there right now for you, Rahul? Oh, it's, it's nice and early. It's 6.30 in the morning, and it's my favorite time of the day.
you did a great job too. I uh, I always do like when I have to do an early session for overseas. I am always really really tired, and I'm worry about whether I am clear and concise and kind of get a point across. I have to say you did a great job today. I really appreciate your spending some time with us. Thank you, Jeff. I, I appreciate you making the initiative to set up the webinars, and I think kudos to Metastock. The fact that they, they they spend a lot of time organizing educational events, whether it's live or whether it's on the web, I think it's not just selling a software. It's kind of uh, holding your hand through that process and helping you get more financial independence. So, uh, great job, Jeff. Thanks for setting this all up, and thank you folks for attending. It means a lot that uh, you came in, took some time out, and I hope I could add some value to you. Uh, thanks, Rahul. Thanks, Rahul. I do want to kind of just remind people uh, um, while I kind of go in here and do uh, do a little bit of switchery. This is um, a session uh, that we're also doing another session on Saturday. It's part of a three-part session. So today we kind of talked about the built-in session for RMO. You do need to sign up for Saturday's session, and I hope you can join us. If you can join us, you can actually go in and uh, we will send a recording to you as long as you sign up for it. So I did make a little bit of a shorter link here. I'm going to paste it in the chat again so you can see it. Uh, but it's Saturday morning. The time of it is a uh, oh, this is the master class. I had the, uh, um, the time of it is I believe it's 1138 Eastern just from memory. So check that when you're registering. It'll actually tell you the time on that registration period. I hope you can join us. If you can join us, um, Rahul is going to be talking about uh, additional methods that he teaches and that he uses with his students in India. So make sure you sign up for that. If you're, The third part of this series is going to be for customers of, the, of uh, Rahul's plug-in for Metastock. Rahul has a plug-in for Metastock uh, that's called the ATM, and it includes all of his modules. He's going to be doing a very, very special training about that. I'm going to tell you about that a little bit as well. I do want to talk about the power screener. Um, so we have an RMO ATM 2. Point oh. it's, a, it's an add-on that's available for Metastock, and it is probably one of our most sophisticated add-ons for Metastock that we've got. It has a screener that Rahul and his programmers actually built for Metastock that runs real-time, if you have Metastock real-time, or end of day. You can build watch lists. It can give you alerts to any of the conditions if something happens during the day. It can actually give you an alert. You can look at the indicators in real time. You can track your portfolio with it. It's just amazing the thing that he actually put together for Metastock. And it runs right alongside Metastock. You can keep it running right there. And um, it's called the Power Screener. Also included with his add-on for Metastock uh, are his systems. They break out Catcher, the ATM Counter Trend Indicator, and the RMO ATM2. We're going to talk about more about those in the Saturday session, but if you sign up for it, what we're also going to give you a pretty good value. Normally, it's $129 a month, but you forever, if you sign up for it as part of kind of this three series of webinars that we're doing, we're going to give you a permanent price of $99. But that's not all. <laughs> We're also going to do a special master class. This master class is going to be on May 10th at 1130 a.m. Eastern. It's going to be uh, uh, only for customers of ATM. And in it, we're going to actually going to go in there, and Rahul is going to talk about setting up his indicators, the time frames he likes to look at, how to watch, set up alerts, using auto sorting within his product, how to look at pages, and he's really going to help you kind of integrate that. So I'd encourage you to kind of take a look at us. Come join us on Saturday. We're going to kind of go into this in a lot of really good detail. Um, and again, uh, uh, we kind of want to wet your whistle with